We are just days away from voting on a 2,000-page bill that will very likely cost $4 trillion. A bill that the White House Chief of Staff recently bragged, and let me quote, twice as big in real dollars as the New Deal was. Can you imagine that? Let that sink in. 2,000 pages, $4 trillion, twice as big in real dollars as the New Deal was. Given its size, scope, given its unquestionable impact on American life, the American people deserve an honest, transparent de debate about its true cost and content. Yet here we are, and not one member of this House can honestly say they have analyzed, studied, or reviewed it. We know this because the Congressional Budget Office has made it clear that they won't have the final analysis on how much the bill costs until Friday at the earliest. But even without the CBO report, we already have a pretty clear idea that the final price tag will be far more expensive than what Democrats are claiming. Now, according to estimates from the University of Pennsylvania Wharton School, one of the best business schools in the nation, they say that new spending would increase by over $4 trillion. Now, that's twice as much as the Democrats say it will cost. And it's not just the top-line cost. It's the tax increases, too. According to Tax Policy Center, a center-left think tank, 20 to 30 percent of middle-income families will see their taxes go up in 2022. Now, that directly breaks President Biden's pledge that he wouldn't raise taxes on the middle class. Let me make sure I state that clearly. According to Tax Policy Center, now this is a center-left think tank, says 20 to 30 percent of middle-income families. These are ones who are already having a hard time because of inflation, who are already going to celebrate the most expensive Thanksgiving in their lifetime, paying gas higher than they've seen, and inflation, to many of them, higher than they've ever had in their own lifetime. But the president promised them he would not raise their taxes. But the tax policy center says 20 to 30 percent are going to have your taxes raised. The Democrats are trying to pull a bait and switch on the American people. Tell them one thing, but vote on something else. The American people obviously know better than to believe a bill of this size would cost zero dollars. I've listened to the president say it. I think he's on late night TV. Who would possibly say this bill would not cost money? The Wharton School of Business says it's more than four trillion. It's only the president who first claimed, if you're a middle class, we wouldn't raise your taxes. We know that's not true. Wharton tells us, yeah, it's not true again what the president says. It is going to cost you four trillion dollars. So in desperation, Speaker Pelosi is demanding the House vote on this bill, even as we do not know exactly how much it will cost or how it will truly impact our lives. If that sounds familiar to you, it should. You see, it's exactly what Speaker Pelosi did just 10 years ago while trying to pass Obamacare. Remember her famous words? We have to pass the bill to find out what's in it. Well, here we go again. So what's the rush? After all, several of my colleagues on the other side of the aisle have been very clear. They want to make sure that this bill actually matches up with what the White House says it will. I just watched before we depart, they wanted these same members to pledge and sign a letter that they would vote for whatever this bill said if the others would vote for the infrastructure bill. Could you imagine your constituents looking at you not even asking if you read what was in the bill because you pledged to vote for it before you could even read it. Speaker Pelosi is rushing this bill to the floor because once they find out that Build Back Better does nothing to lower gasoline prices or reduce food prices or fix our broken supply chain or stop illegal immigration at the border, makes our, doesn't make our streets any safer or our schools better for the children, once they find all that out, they will reject it overwhelmingly. 
Madam Speaker, I know that many of my colleagues on the other side of the aisle understand this. That they truly do not want to vote on this bill because they know it can't be justified. I know, Madam Speaker, that they know it can't be justified to spend trillions of dollars when inflation just hit a 30-year high, Madam Speaker. They know it just can't be justified to spend trillions of dollars on programs that benefit them politically while hiking taxes on the middle class. They can't, Madam Speaker. They know it can't be justified to spend trillions of dollars for mass amnesty during the worst border crisis in history. They know it can't be justified to spend trillions of dollars that will make gasoline even more expensive than it currently is on a seven-year high. Madam Speaker, they know it can't be justified to spend trillions of dollars to hire 87,000 new IRS agents to spy on any American who spends as little as $28 a day. They know it can't be justified to spend trillions of dollars to make the labor crisis worse by turning the child tax credit into a welfare without any work requirement. They know it can't be justified to spend trillions of dollars to abandon, abandon the Hyde Amendment, allowing for taxpayer-funded abortion on demand. And they know it cannot be justified to spend trillions of dollars to dictate our children's education standards so that Washington has the final say in what our children learn. On the merits, this bill deserves to be defeated. Fundamentally, it is anti-worker, anti-family, anti-jobs, anti-energy, and anti-American. From bank surveillance to bailouts, it takes the problems President Biden and Washington Democrats have created over the past nine months and makes them much, much worse, Madam Speaker. Its destructive policies should alarm every American. Madam Speaker, Democrats aren't just ignoring what's going on throughout the country. It's worse. They aren't even pretending to listen. And that is the fundamental difference between Democrats and Republicans. Madam Speaker, the Democrats are focused on securing the Speaker's legacy. House Republicans are focused on solving the labor crisis. Democrats are focused on so-called equality. We are focused on quality education. Democrats are focused on payoffs for illegal immigrants. We're focused on protecting the border. Democrats are focused on the Green New Deal. We're focused on lowering the gas prices. Democrats are focused on mandates. Republicans are focused on more freedom. When you look at those differences, it's no wonder that the American people want to change in leadership. You know, Madam Speaker, just this morning, a Democrat in the Texas House of Representatives changed parties. This comes just two weeks after voters from Virginia to Seattle rejected the radical Democrats and vo voted to return to common sense. Madam Speaker, just last Tuesday, it wasn't just Virginia. Madam Speaker, you understand this very well, I know, that Joe Biden won Virginia by 10 points. He won New Jersey by 16. But Madam Speaker, on that night, it wasn't just Virginia that flipped. The races in New York, the races, Madam Speaker, in your own state, in Minneapolis, in Seattle, for the city attorney. And Madam Speaker, there were good news and bad news that night. In New Jersey, the good news for many people across this country was a tr Republican truck driver with less than $200 defeated the second most powerful elected position in New Jersey, the Democrat Senate president. That was the good news. The bad news, Madam Speaker, in this new Biden America, we just lost another truck driver and we need so much more help. It's not just a message, it's a mandate. Not for left versus right, but for right versus wrong. My question is, will Washington Democrats listen? So far, Madam Speaker, that answer is no. They're focusing on themselves and on the demands of Speaker Pelosi. Madam Speaker, I know today the longest serving Democrat in the Senate announced retirement. I don't know what plan Speaker Pelosi has, I know she's been to Europe three times in the last three months. 
I don't know if she plans on staying longer. I know in her press conference that she said this will be the culmination of her career. Maybe that's why she's pushing so hard for people to vote on a bill that costs $4 trillion, that breaks the promises of President Biden before anybody could actually read it or analyze it. I just think that's wrong. But we have a chance this week to correct course and save America. Madam Speaker, so many Americans, independents, Democrats, and Republicans went to the polls last Tuesday. It wasn't a little pocket one place said one thing and one said another. It was overwhelmingly resounding, a rejection of the current policies of this majority. You know, Madam Speaker, this one-party rule of Washington in one year has given us not just inflation, but rising gasoline prices, a labor crisis, a supply chain crisis, chaos, crime, and worst of all, failure. As we sit here today, Madam Speaker, Russia brings thousands of their military to the border of Ukraine. They feel empowered because they are able to have a pipeline that President Biden okayed, but America was denied. We watch China pressure Taiwan even further. Madam Speaker, we still have Americans stuck in Afghanistan. Madam Speaker, it's just a little week away from Thanksgiving when thousands of millions of Americans will gather together. But those events may be smaller because they may not afford the gas to drive to see their family. They might not be able to afford the most expensive Thanksgiving dinner they've ever had. They're looking to Washington to do better. Madam Speaker, the worst thing possibly could do is not to listen to them. They have spoke loud. They have spoke clearly. But the path that we're on are, is wrong. They cannot afford it. They cannot accept it. And they expect us to do better. But an idea to rush a bill this large and not have any analysis to think the American people won't understand it. They've watched what's happened this year under one party rule. And on Tuesday, they said that will change. I just hope, Madam Speaker, that this body listens, waits for the report, because they will not be able to justify a yes vote for it. America cannot afford it. For the good of the country, let's take a hold of it. Let's defeat this bill. With that, Madam Speaker, I'll yield back.